Batman, how you're doing? This is my review of Batman The Doom That Came To Gotham, co-directed by Christopher Berkeley, who's also worked on animated series Teen Titans and Young Justice. Also co-directing is Sam Leo, who's worked on 2016's The Killing Joke and 2013's Beware of Batman. This film has a top casting of David June Sully as Batman, Tati Gabriel as Kai Lee Kane, Christopher Gorham as Oliver Queen, John DiMaggio as James Gordon, Patrick Fabian as Harvey Dent, Brian George as Alfred, and Jason Marston as Dick Grayson. This film is rated PG-13, so expect disturbing images, strong violence, um, partial nudity, and strong language. Adventurer Bruce Wayne discovers a horrifying secret that threatens the 1920s Gotham and the rest of the world. This film is based off the free comic miniseries that was brought out in the early 2000s. The Doom That Came to Gotham is an alternate world tale, so we see a different version of Bruce Wayne and the residents of Gotham to Lovecraftian horrors. This is the most horrific entry in the Batman animated franchise, and to be honest, the strangest. The film starts off with an expedition led by Bruce Wayne to find another expedition that's gone missing. The missing expedition was led by Professor Cobblepot. What he finds instead are mutated creatures and the Professor's undead assistant to whom he brings back to Gotham. This sets in motion a plot by Talia al Ghul to bring back Raz al Ghul and an entity foretold by the cult that is responsible for the death of Thomas and Martha Wayne. In order to stop this from happening, Bruce must learn the true origins of Gotham, his family fortune and his ultimate destiny. There is so much that they have to try and cram into this film as it's only 1 hour and 26 minutes long. Although this film is highly entertaining, it is very fast paced and at times felt rushed. This film is based in an alternate timeline but some of the characters are still similar. For example, Harvey Dent and Dick Grayson are still the same. Oliver Queen still possesses the abilities that he has of the Green Arrow but he's not officially the Green Arrow. And Barbara Gordon is still the oracle, but the other sense of the word, as in like the fortune prophecy type. Not really knowing a lot about these characters and definitely not knowing how they became these characters, um, they seemed a bit disconnected from the story at times. The minor characters seem to be more like plot devices than actual characters. They show up, cause something to happen or something happens to them, and then they just go away in a matter of minutes. It feels like there was way too much information from the comics to actually put in this film and rather than leave characters out or events they just kind of presented them without explanation. The animation was good but it definitely lacked a human touch um, as this film is an all computer animated film. The final act goes down a demonic rabbit hole and delivers us with a similar but unique version of the I am Batman quote. This is when the film is at its best and actually lets us know what's going on. The backstory may have some fans that have less tolerance for the occult storyline sighing, but I found this film enjoyable and it's not trying to be anything special and it's not trying to win awards. It's just a really good twist on the world's greatest detective and definitely a film for the Batman fanbase. But that's just my thoughts and feelings about the film. If you've seen it, I'd love to know what you thought about it in the comments below. And a big thank you for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. So until next time, take care.